Assalamualaikum Waalaikumsalam Welcome to a new edition of our program, Peace Be Upon You. And uh, still we are talking about the, the blessings in the holy month of Ramadan, the month of Quran, the month of forgiveness, and uh, the month of goodness. Uh, we are joined today by Dr. Saeed Keshkan, Islamic researcher at Al-Azhar. He will tell us more about uh, this month. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Saeed. Good afternoon, Dr. Shireen, and to all our dear respected viewers, Ramadan Kareem, kul aamun wa hadaratikum bi khair. Many happy returns, and welcome to a new episode of your program, Peace Be Upon You. Salamu Allahi alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh. You lift me up high, you spread my ways and fly me to the sky. I feel so alive. It's like my soul thrives in your life. Can you tell us some more about the excuses uh, with which it is permissible to uh, break fasting in Ramadan? After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the ayah in which he commands Muslims to um, fast during the month of Ramadan and fasting become obligatory, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned saying that, that fasting for specific days, for a specific number of days. And then in the same ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us who are exempted from fasting during the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, whoever among you is ill or on a journey, then an equal number of days, and upon those who are able, a ransom of feeding a poor person, and whoever volunteers excess, it is better for him. For those who are physically ill, or for those who are mentally ill, or those who are suffering during any illness during the months of Ramadan, or for those who are traveler or on a journey فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرْ he may, uh, he may make equivalent number of days as a makeup after the month of Ramadan. So those two people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala illustrates and clarifies for them as exemption as they are permissible for them to fast and to break their fast during the month of Ramadan. These are we say valid excuses. So the valid excuses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given for the some people to break their fast during the month of Ramadan are the sick people, the, physical, the physically ill people, the, phys the mentally ill people, those who are maybe um, supposed or maybe um, feel that or maybe think that the fasting during the month of Ramadan will worsen their health. At that time, uh, fasting, breaking the fast is permissible for them. The breastfeeding or the pregnant lady, if the doctor told him that fasting would worsen their health, or would hurt or harm them, the infant or the baby, in that case, um, it's permissible for them to break the fast and to make qada after that. Also for those who are travelers, for those who are on a journey during the month of Ramadan, 
they have to make, they, it's permissible for them to make qada, it's permissible for them to break their fast during the month of Ramadan in condition to make qada after the month of Ramadan. So the word qada is an Islamic word. It refers to those who break their fast for a valid excuse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned and the Prophet Muhammad teaches us. So for any Muslim, fasting is a general rule in Islam, is fasting is obligatory. And there are some valid excuses for a Muslim to break his fast. For anyone who has that valid excuses, valid excuses such as maybe um, physically ill, or a traveler, or a pregnant, or maybe he is, um, or maybe she's a, a breastfeeding lady, or anyone who is a doctor told him that, that fasting would worsen his health or would harm him, in that case, it's permissible for him to break his fast during the month of Ramadan and make up later after the month of Ramadan with the equivalent number of days that he break his fast during the month of Ramadan with the term we call it in Islam Al-Qaba. So if someone uh, is not able uh, to fast uh, for uh, reasons like uh, being sick uh, or uh, getting old, uh, what should he do? So after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that in the Quran that, that fasting become obligatory and prescribed upon every Muslim all over the world. And after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us who are exempted from fasting during the month of Ramadan, and can minkum maridan aw ala safar as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned and give them qada as we mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned also also mentioned wa ala ladina yutikunahu fidyatun ta'amu miskin. For those who cannot make qada, for those who are able to fast with a heart severe hardship. Maybe for they are old enough, they cannot even make qada after the months of Ramadan, or maybe have permanent disease. May Allah grant them a speed recovery. For all those people who cannot fast during the months of Ramadan, or who cannot be able to fast even after the months of Ramadan to make qada, they cannot even make qada, it's permissible for them to pay ransom or to make fidya, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches in the Quran. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, whoever among you is ill or on a journey, then an equal number of days, and upon those who are able, a ransom of feeding a poor person, and whoever volunteers excess, it is better for him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make ransom or fidya for those who are not able to fast during the month of Ramadan or even cannot make qada after the month of Ramadan. So he's able to fast, but with a severe hardship. Maybe fast will worsen his health. It's up to them that the Quran give them the permission and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, give them the permission that to pay ransom. And the ransom is to pay fidya, which is um, to feed a poor person for each day that he break his fast during the month of Ramadan. So the least fidya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in this ayah is to feed a poor person for each day that he missed during the month of Ramadan. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same ayah said, فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرُ الله. For those who are able to feed more people, for, for those who are able to feed two persons for each day, for example, he missed, or three people uh, for each day that he missed, it's better for him, it's up to him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the fidya, the least fidya is to feed a poor person for each day that he missed. And if you can feed more, it's up to you and it's better for you. And the people also uh, who have hard uh, jobs, uh, is there a license for them uh, to uh, break uh, their fast? Generally speaking, the general rule in Islam, which is if you are able to do, if you are able to fast, even with hardship, it's better for you. This is a general rule in Islam. Even for those who are sick, but is able to do so in condition that his health will not be seriously affected. 
وأن تصوموا خير لكم. For those who work hard, maybe um, he suffer from thirsty and hunger. وأن تصوموا خير لكم. It's maybe to um, some scholars and some ulama said that if he is um, make sure that he will be seriously affected and his health will be seriously affected, he can break his fast. But even if the person is um, facing difficulties and the challenges uh, during the daytime of the month of Ramadan um, and he is able to fast, he must fast. It's better for him to fast. It's recommended for him to fast as the Prophet, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even for those who are not able to do so. Even for those who are old people, even for those who are permanent sick or those who are, have a chronic diseases. And they are not able to fast during the months of Ramadan. And even are not able to fast after the months of Ramadan or make qada because of their age, they are older age, or maybe because of their chronic diseases or permanent diseases. If those people, doctor told them that fasting for the, the hours of fasting during the daytime of the month of Ramadan will not worsen their health and will not seriously affect their health, then at that time fasting is better for them. It's okay for them to pay ransom, fidya. It's up to them to break their fast, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make a general rule for those who are facing difficulties, for those who have a tough job, for those who are a little bit sick, for those who are traveler, but they are still able to fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a permission to break your fast, but in case if that not what is that, um, in case if that will not worsen, if that uh, not worsen your health, if that not affect, seriously affect your health, in that case, you have the option, you have the permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to break your fast. But after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the permission, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the same ayah say, But for those who are taking the permission, it's recommended for them to take a permission. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches saying that, Inna Allah yuhibba an tu'ta rukhasa, kama yuhibba an tu'ta azaim. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches saying that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves people to take his permission. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves people to obey him. So in case if you are have the permission and fasting will harm or affect your baby if you are pregnant or breastfeeding or affect your health, worsen your health, in that case it's recommended for you to break your fast and to make qada later or to pay ransom as we said before. But in case if you are a little bit sick, if you are pregnant but you still can fast without affecting your baby, if you are, if you are breastfeeding a baby but you can still fast without affecting the baby, in that case, fasting is better for you as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Fasting is better for you if you already know. Dear viewers, a short break and we'll be back, so stay tuned. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, when comes the help of Allah to you, O Muhammad, against your enemies and the conquest of Mecca, and you see that the people enter Allah's religion in crowds, so glorify the praises of your Lord and ask for his forgiveness. Verily, he is the one who accepts the repentance and forgives. The conquest of Mecca, according to many scholars, took place in the 8th Hijri year during the month of Ramadan, uh, and that's approximately in December of uh, the year 629 or January of the year 630. 
in the month of Dhul Qada, the sixth uh, month in the Hijri calendar, uh, Quraysh uh, and uh, uh, the Muslims of Medina signed a 10 year truce called uh, the Treaty of Al Hudaybiyah or Sulh Al Hudaybiyah. Despite the improved relations between Mecca and Medina after the signing of the Treaty of Al Hudaybiyah, the peace was broken by Quraysh of Mecca with their allies, the tribe of Bani Bakr, um, and attacked the tribe of Huza'a. Huza'a were allies of the Muslims uh, in Medina. And when the Prophet, uh, peace be upon him, heard uh, of the attack, he immediately ordered his companions to prepare for war. On the 10th day of Ramadan, uh, uh, in the 8th uh, Hijri year, the uh, Prophet, uh, uh, of Allah, peace be upon him, along with his 10,000 uh, uh, companions, uh, which was the largest Muslim force ever uh, assembled as of that time, went on their journey to Mecca. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then ordered Khalid uh, ibn al-Walid uh, to enter Mecca from its upper part, uh, uh, from Kara, while the Prophet, peace be upon him himself, entered from Shura, a hill in Mecca. The Prophet uh, arrived uh, in Mecca in the year of the conquest. When he made his sea camel kneel down near the holy Al Kaaba, he said to Uthman, Get us the key of Al Kaaba. He brought the key to him and opened the gate of the Al Kaaba for him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, Usama, Bilal, and Uthman ibn Talha entered uh, Al Kaaba and then closed the gate behind them. From inside, the Prophet, peace be upon him, stayed there for a long period and then came out. Because Abu Sufyan was the present chief of Quraysh and had become a Muslim, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, declared Abu Sufyan's house a sanctuary and said, Even he who enters the house of Abu Sufyan will be safe, he who lays down arms will be safe, he who locks his door will be safe. The conquest of Mecca is the most significant event in Islamic history. With this conquest, both the inside of Mecca and the places around it were cleaned of idols. The hearts uh, of the uh, Quraysh were also cleaned of polytheism and became spotless with the light of oneness of Allah. <laughs> Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. And uh, in this segment of the program, we will uh, talk about the conquest of Mecca, which occurred on the 10th of uh, Ramadan uh, in the eighth year of the Hijri, uh, of the Hijra, rather. Uh, so uh, we will uh, know more about the conquest of uh, Mecca uh, from our dear guest today, Dr. Said. Yes, uh, Dr. Said. Welcome back, Dr. Shireen, and uh, continue talking about Fatuh Mecca, opening of Mecca that take place during the month of Ramadan, and how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam set a great example of tolerance in Islam. Salamu alaihi alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh. Uh, to what extent uh, the conquest of Mecca is important in the Islamic history? Fatuh Mecca, opening of Mecca, take place during the month of Ramadan. So after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was forced to leave his beloved city Mecca the place where he was born. Wallahi innaki ahabbu bladullahi ilayy. Walaw lam yukhrujuni kawmaki ma kharajt. O Mecca, you are the most beloved city to me and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna awwala baytin wudha al nasi lalladhi bi bakkata mubarak and that the first place that be worshipped that bought in this world for Allah to be worshipped is in Mecca, which is a masjid al-haram, which is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are the most beloved city to Allah and to me. That's what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said while he was leaving Mecca. He was forced to leave Mecca because the disbeliever, um, the disbeliever started to torture his companions. And all of the Prophet Muhammad followers and companions left Mecca to settle in Medina. And they start to settle in Medina. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi so he make like a brothership ties between Al Muhajirina, those who migrate with him from Mecca, and the Ansar, those who are resident of Mecca, those who are resident of Al Medina at that time. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his followers, Al Muhajirina, his those who, migra those who migrate with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from Mecca to Medina, they lived with the Prophet Muhammad in Al Medina, 
the enlightened, the, uh, the enlightened city, which you, it was called even before Yathrib. And it's named al madinatul Murawara, the lightened city, because of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrival. So the Prophet Muhammad arrived to Medina with his muhajireen, with those who migrate from Mecca to Medina with the Prophet Muhammad. And they settled in al Medina for about eight years. After that, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, decide to come back to Mecca, to open Mecca. And he came back after he established a great uh, Muslim uh, city in Medina and a great Muslim army, it was a power army. The Prophet Muhammad came back to Mecca with a great army, with 10,000 soldiers. Among them, they were the companions, the followers of the Prophet Muhammad who were migrated and who were forced to leave their property and leave everything in Mecca. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back to Mecca and in a powerful, in a power um, among um, a great number of Sahaba, among a great number of soldiers, 10,000 soldiers. And he asking people, What do you think I will do with you, O people of Mecca? The leader of Mecca is in front of them. They could not even face the Prophet Muhammad and his army at that time. What do you think I will do with you after you've been forced us from leaving our hometown? After you forced us to leave our property from Mecca and we left in Medina for eight years. So now we come back to our city. What do you think I will do for you? What do you think I will do with you? So the people of Mecca, the leader of Mecca, knew the Prophet Muhammad's character. Knew that the Prophet Muhammad even was well known by Sadiq al-Amin, the most trustworthy, even before delivering the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they said that, Akhun Karim, you are a noble man. We knew that you, Muhammad, that you are a noble man, a son of a noble man. Akhun Karim, ibn Akhun Karim. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Said a great example of tolerance. Say that is Go, you are free. So that statement we deserve to be studied. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a great example how a Muslim should be a tolerant, even in case of having a power. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, though those people forced to leave his hometown, those people though they tortured the Sahaba. They asked and forced them to leave the property. And the Prophet Muhammad came back with a strength, with, in a strong power, in a great army. Still, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam give a great example of being tolerant. Get a great model of tolerance in Islam. A great example that the Prophet Muhammad never asked for revenge. And that what the Quran described the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٌ عَظِيمٌ O Muhammad, you are a man of a great character. And this is how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was described even in a Western people's park. And this is what the Quran says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ O Muhammad, we have sent you as a just some mercy for the whole world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when described the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that, that that the Prophet Muhammad sallam, is a mercy. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam opened and conquered Mecca without shedding a blood. And even the Prophet Muhammad combined and his teaching to the Sahaba before they start to open Mecca, the Prophet Muhammad even teaches us, every one of us, the ethics of Islam, the constitution ethics of Islam, even during a war, even during defending our homeland. Even um, during a battle, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches his Sahaba saying that, لا تقتلوا طفلا ولا رجلا كبيرا ولا امرأة ولا تهدموا صومعة ولا كنيسة ولا تقطعوا شجرة ولا تزبحوا شاة إلا لأكلها. This is how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaching and ethics during a war. Even during the Battle of Badr, even during open Mecca that take place during the month of Ramadan, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches the Sahaba and teaches the Ummah after that. Even during a war, Muslims still have to follow the ethics of Islam. لا تقتلوا طفلا, don't kill a baby. ولا امرأة, don't kill a woman. ولا رجلا كبير, don't kill an old man. Even the Prophet Muhammad guarantee a dignity to the environment. Don't cut a tree. 
ولا تهدموا الصومعات دونت ديستروي ا تمبل اور تشيرش ولا تذبحوا ام ايفن ذا بروفيت محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فاوند ذا جرانتي ديجنيتي فور انيمالز ولا تذبحوا شاتا دونت سلوتر ا كاو اور شيب الا لاكلها ذيس از هاو ذا بروفيت محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم was the mercy not only in case of peace but even in case of fuwa how the prophet of islam teaches muslims that they should not hurt or harm a civilian during a war even in islam muslims are commanded to defend their homeland not to start attack and this is what the prophet and this is what the quran teaches us waqatilu fi sabili llahi alladhina yuqatilunakum wa la ta'tadu fight for the sake of allah those who are fighting you at the same time wa la ta'tadu don't transgress the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the limits that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us. And even that's why the Western people, whoever study the history and whoever study the Prophet Muhammad theography, they fell in love with him because they see how was his character, how was he was a mercy, even with the non-Muslim people, even with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him in the Quran. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ الْعَالَمِينَ O Muhammad, we have sent you as a mercy for the whole world. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, and we have not sent you except as a mercy to the world. And by that, dear viewers, we come to the end of today's edition of our program, Peace Be upon you. I'd like to thank uh, my dear guest for today, uh, Dr. Said Keshke. Thank you, Dr. Said, for being with us. I appreciate having me, Dr. Shreen. Until next episode of your program, continue talking about the months of Ramadan, the great value of the months of Ramadan, the importance, the significance, and the great reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make for those who are fast during the months of Ramadan. Till the next episodes, Salaamu Allahi Alaikum wa Rahmatuhu wa Barakatuh. Thank you. And uh, see you in a new edition of our program. Assalamualaikum wa alaikum salam